So, Tom, uh, you know what? This is I, I've just got a very easy question to start out with, and, and then maybe we'll flesh out some of the specifics here as the conversation proceeds here today. The first question I have is, despite a lot of evangelicals I know being skeptical of Ron Paul as a presidential candidate, can you give the Christian case for voting for him as president? What's, that, what's the overall case for that look like? Uh, the overall case, I think, runs like this, that first we know he is a, he's a man of faith and he's a man of integrity. And these are not just buzzwords that I'm throwing around. For example, in Congress, he has been willing to stand up for his beliefs to the point that he has been the sole no vote in Congress more than all other congressmen have put together. He, has, uh, he can't be bought. Lobbyists don't bother coming to his office. He's a family man himself, five children, 18 grandchildren. Several of his children are physicians. Uh, one of them, Joy, is also an OB and also active in the pro-life movement. He believes that the federal courts are completely out of control and they need to be reined in. And we have the constitutional tools to rein them in. We just don't have the courage to use those tools. He believes in the primacy of the family unit. He believes that parents are the primary educators of their children. A lot of people give lip service to that, but you're not going to find any stronger supporter of homeschooling and private schools and tax credits for homeschoolers and private school families. He believes in honest money. That is a money system where the government can't just print up all the money it wants to. Well, this, is a, this principle is based on the biblical admonition regarding honest weights and measures, that God despises those who would, uh, those who would screw up the scales, the mm-hmm. scales of justice and the scales of money. Mm-hmm. You can't just debase the money. And then, moreover, there are things that he's done that I think are of benefit to all of us. For example, here we are living in, I think, not just another garden variety recession. I mean, we're living in world historic times with debt crises all over the world, and and the statistics are terrible, but yet in 2001, he nailed it. He said, like, almost like he can see the future. He said in 2001, on the House floor, we've just seen Internet stocks go boom and bust, and thanks to the Federal Reserve, we're now seeing real estate go boom, and that just as surely will go bust. Now, he saw that seven years ahead of time, and and, and, uh, Herman Cain, you and I are not big fans of him, Seven days before the crisis hit, he didn't I hadn't heard that. <laughs> I hadn't heard that. I'm sorry, so, Tom. Go ahead. Sorry. Go so ahead. my so my overall my summary of this is he's intelligent. He's principled. He will tell you what he believes. Here are the trillion dollars in cuts I'll make, and I know I'm going to be attacked for that. But I have too much integrity to keep my mouth shut. Or if I I'll say things in a Republican debate that'll get me booed. I know they're going to get me booed. But I believe in them and I want to say them, whether you agree with him or not, I think we could use an awful lot more of that type of courage in this country. Hmm. And, of course, on top of that, there's his commitment to to life and his anti-abortion credentials throughout his career. 